Well, hey guys, welcome back. It's time for the chip amp power test. I have four 8 pin dual inline package audio amplifier IC set up here on the board, and I'm going to do power tests of each one and compare them. I have the TDA7267, TDA7231, LM386, and the TDA7250. Now I have done reviews of all of these chips before. In fact, just a couple videos ago I did the 7231. And the other ones I've done quite a while ago. But I haven't really performed a comprehensive power test. What I want to do is test them at 8 ohms, 4 ohms, and at different supply voltages. Log all the data and put it into a spreadsheet and come back with all the graphs. And I'm not going to bore you with all of the power measurements. I will do just one power measurement on each chip. Then I'll go back and do the rest of the power measurements and come back with the results. All right, let's get started. I have the 8 ohm load connected here. The scope is connected right at the load. I'll furnish the signal with the preamp. And we'll start off with the TDA7267. And the power supply is connected to the rails here, and I have stiffening capacitors at three points along the rail. So we should be good to go. Okay, the TDA7267 with a 9 volt supply. And putting out 2.77 volts. Turn that off and very clean output and there's clipping so if we tune out clipping there is really no other distortion that is my one percent reference pilot signal so it helps me compare other distortion but this is a very clean chip so 2.77 squared divided by 8 so at 9 volts, 8 ohm loads, it's putting out 0.959 watts. About 0.96, just shy of 1 watt. Okay, the TDA7231 is putting out 2.5 volts. That's clipping. It's fairly clean, but it has that second order harmonic notch. Probably uh, 0.2 or 0.3 percent. Yeah, 0.2 percent. You know, that's hardly anything, but it has the same pin out configuration as the 7267, but that one was a bit cleaner. I can't quite tune that all the way out. 2.5 squared by 8, 0.78 watts. Okay, the LM386, 1.83 volts at 9 volts, 8 ohms. Turn that off. And it has a very clean signal, second, third, fourth. There's a very small fourth harmonic notch, but it's a pretty clean amplifier actually before clipping. Again, I can only do so much on these boards, but I have it set up as good as I can get the grounds. So yeah, it's performing pretty well. 1.83 volts RMS squared divided by 8. 0.418 well, I had to stop the test because that power measurement seemed kind of low. 0.4 watts, it should be doing better than that. So I looked at the chip and it said LM386 N-4. And by memory, I think N-4 suffix is for a higher voltage chip that you would run with a 16 ohm load. So it's not optimized as well for the voltages that I'm measuring at. 
So I looked all over the place for another LM386 and finally found one on this board that I made way back in the 1980s. In fact, the chip had a date code of 8640 on it, 1986. So I desoldered it from this board and popped it in here. And we'll see what it is. It's an N-1 suffix. So I think that would work. Probably should consult the data sheet, but really that's the only other chip I have to test with. And uh, we'll see if we can get better power from it. Well, I guess that was somewhat of a fruitless task. We did do it a little bit better. Got 4.7 watts. I thought we would get over half a watt at least. Well, anyway, I will continue measuring. Here's the TDA 7052. It's actually a bridge amp, and we're running at 6 volts. Because of the thermal dissipation and current limits, I really can't run this at 9 volts. So with the 8 ohm load, we're getting... Uh, 2.58 volts RMS, which comes out to 0.83 watts at 6 volts. So that's going to be a lot better than the other ICs. But again, it's a bridge type output, so it's going to put out more power than the others. Okay, I'll go ahead and continue taking measurements. And I will come back with all of the results. I'm back with the results. I made some graphs and I have some numbers which I will reveal momentarily. This here is the 4 ohm measurements. Up here are the 8 ohm measurements. X axis is the supply voltage. Y axis is the output power. So you can see here the TDA 7052 because it is a bridge amplifier, it has much higher output than the other chip amps at lower supply voltages. Now due to the thermal and current limitations of the 7052, you really can't run that at higher supply voltages with a load. But you can see the other chips can put out much more output because they will run at much higher supply voltages. So you can see here that the 7052 can put out the same output running at only 7.5 volts than the other chip amps running at 12 volts. So you can see the benefit there if you have limited supply voltage. And of course that's at 8 ohm loads. I guess the disappointment here would be the LM386. It kind of lags behind, especially when you get above 6 volts. It starts lagging behind the other ICs. And that's really true at 4 ohm loads. The, I, the LM386 is just not meant for 4 ohm loads. And here is the actual data. Ignore this over here. These numbers are the RMS voltage I had to put into the spreadsheet to have it calculate the wattages for me. So this row here is the IC chip numbers. This column is the supply voltage. This is the 8 ohm data set. This is the 4 ohm data set. Because of the power dissipation limitations and current limits of these ICs, there's no data at 12 and 15 volts on the 4 ohm set. And that also applies to the 7052A IC. There's not as much data for it because I can't use higher voltages on that IC without exceeding its thermal and current limitations. One interesting thing of the LM386 Notice at 9 volts 8 ohm loads, it put out 0.48 watts. But the 
pretty much doubled that. And if you go to 9 volts at 4 ohm loads, the LM386 really didn't put out much more output. The reason for that is it's just struggling to deliver current. It's beyond its capabilities. That's why I say that IC is not capable of using it with 4 ohms. Now you can use it at 4 ohms at lower voltages because there's not as much current, though you still are quite limited in its output. So at 9 volts, again, it put out half a watt, whereas the 7267 more than tripled its output. And, you know, that's not even a bridge amplifier, so it's just limited in current. To be fair, the LM386 is an old chip. You know, it was developed in the 70s. I consider it a first-generation audio amplifier IC. The TDA7231, which kind of ran in the middle, is a second-generation, which came out in the late 80s. And the TDA7267, I consider a third-generation, and it came out in the later 90s I believe and it's just more optimized to deliver power at a given supply voltage it also did very well with distortion you know nothing glaringly ugly stood out did a very fine job and that's why it's my favorite low power audio amplifier I see but on the other hand if you need decent output power and you only have a limited supply voltage, you can run the TDA 7052A at 8 ohms up to 7.5 volts and get, you know, about a watt and a half. So that's pretty decent. Well, I hope you found that interesting and thanks for watching.